beloved. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm here to discuss some cookeries, right? Somebody asked me, what is my opinion on them when it comes to bushcraft and cookeries? And throughout my journey of bushcraft, I almost always carried a cookery. But they have major downfalls um, in the commercial aspect when you're trying to buy one. Somebody's going to ask me, but here it is. Condor Heavy Duty Cookery. You can find them on Amazon. This one I got for like $50 when they first came out. So I've had this for a very long time. The other cookery that I'll be talking about is this one, right? Uh, it's right here. It comes from Windless, and uh, it's another great buy. Now, I said there are some drawbacks, and I can show you very quickly what are the drawbacks between these two. And the first one is always the sheath. While Condor has a bulletproof sheath, and it is amazing quality, especially for the price range. The sheath is worth like $100 by itself. <laughs> Traditional made cookeries usually have very poorly constructed sheath. You can see that this one's missing the actual frog and the belt loop. I'm um, in the midst of making an actual uh, sheath for it. And think about it. If you're going around the bush and you're going all uppy and downy, right? This is good. This is not. That is a consistent issue with some of these cookeries, right? This is amazing. I mean, you can see that it's been very well loved. It comes very blunt, but guess what? It is amazing. Now, another thing that uh, I don't particularly like about cookeries any longer is their shape. Though it is great at chopping, uh, a lot of them are extremely thick, very heavy, and uh, sharpening them is extremely difficult. How, how are you going to sharpen this um, without some type of advanced tool? The answer is actually using sandpaper and a little dowel, but... Um, Think about it when you're choosing something like this, particularly when you can do other things like parangs, which is what I've actually moved into, and I make a lot of them as well. I think they're more effective and easier to sharpen, overall easier maintenance. Another example, though this one is a rat tail, you can see that there's a little tang right here where it's been peened over in this brass pommel. Reliability. I do not mind at all rat tail tang knives. I, it's a lot of what I make with, but when you're swinging something this heavy, are you really trusting a quarter inch, maybe half an inch piece of metal uh, between a transition of another inch to there? Are you really trusting that? You don't have that issue with the Condor once again. Condor's a great buy. It's a little heavy because it's full tang. Now, don't get me wrong. This has survived all the abuse I've put it through, but it wouldn't be the first thing that I'm like, yeah, this is where I'm betting my life. I'm going to go with the Condor for sure. Another reason why I like something more commercially made than handcrafted or artisan right you remember that company uh exgurka kruki house have you seen the tangs that they have it's usually like a tapered tang and it just the fin finish is just not my like it doesn't appeal to me i don't like it especially for something that's 100 of schmeckles plus you know shipping and stuff like that i wanted to look another one of my pet peeves is these little knives right right here you see them those little knives are most always useless with any cookery that you buy i have bought maybe 10 cookeries and they have always been useless sure maybe you could sharpen them put a little effort but i think they're more de decoration than anything one is meant to be sharp apparently and the other one's supposed to like you know report or file the blade and stuff like that yeah no it's bs it just they're, they're, they're always so crappy and they look really horrible here's another one you can see that if you look closely the fin finish is just just not really there it's I don't know. I think, once again, they're more for decoration than anything else. Honestly, at this point, this video should be called nitpicking handmade versus, you know, commercially made cookeries. But here's another reason, right? So the gears from uh, uh, the Gurkha House website, how they're making them and everything. When you see one of these videos and you see them quenching it, you're kind of like, mm, you didn't even run it by a magnet or nothing to check for non-magnetic. It's just not what I want to bet my life on. Which full circles me back to... Would I choose a kukri as my main bushcraft? Absolutely. It just depends which one. I like the Condor. Cold Steel has a few series. This one's actually kind of expensive, but, you know, it is what it is for quality and consistency. K-Bar has a decent one with a rat tail tank. I've never seen one of these broken. Feel free to enlighten me if you've seen one. Here is yet another uh, Cold Steel one. It's about $50, uh, the real kukri. Very good. You've seen this in Naked and Afraid if you watch Naked and Afraid. Overall, I think they're great knives, but... If you think you're just going to pick one of these up and from Gurkha X, Gurkha House, and you're going to go out there and survive, think twice because sometimes the quality can be hit and miss. Pick one of these up, for sure. You're definitely going to do it, but it's a little heavy. It's very, very heavy. But it's not broken. It's, it's been very well loved. There's a great saying, right? You train how you fight. Make sure that all the tools that you utilize, right, are you going to take somewhere to survive, you actually train with them first. See if you like it. See the fit. See the issues before you trust your life in it. Feel free to comment your opinion. Let me know what you think about it. And let me see what else you'd kind of like to see in the channel. 
Thank you for watching.